This is a segment from ShiftCast. If you want to catch the full episode, you can check it out in the live tab of our YouTube channel or watch us on Spotify. Let's get right into it. All right, well, we're going to conclude the episode here with speed taking. Obviously, just two of us here, so we're going to take three each, and I'll just throw it over to you. No. Toss me one, and uh, we'll, give our, oh, right. we'll give our take on what your takes are. Mm, what's a pick? What's a pick? Ooh, this one's for you. Let's start okay. off with something that's made for you. From Julian, who says, The Friday Night Duels 1v1 show match it should return at Worlds this season. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll say this, we don't have to stop there. Yeah. Any type of content that's not specifically the 3v3 matches at Worlds, yes, let's do it. I mean, you think about um, like NBA, they've got like their All-Star Weekend. They've got their little exhibition match. They've got a dunk contest, a three-point contest. And we don't have to mimic those exact things, but just ways to entertain and celebrate the awesome moment that is the world championship. And, and, and the more content, in my opinion, the better. I, I Look, I know a lot of people didn't like the freestyle thing, and that's fair, but I commend them for trying something. Yes. We learned, right? We learned, hey, that's not really a good thing to um, – that's not really a good scenario to put uh, the freestylers in, right? It's not their fault. But the, the thing that they do is repetition. They try it over and over and over until they get it, right? So it doesn't, it's not a good fit to go onto a live environment. It's tough. Yeah. But there are other things that they could do. Um, and, and the 1v1 show matches, I think, were a phenomenal choice. That was such a hit. Obviously, I, I love the 1v1 stuff, but I think that is something that a lot of people love. You know, how many times have we heard for, you know, calls for the 1v1 circuit? I think Johnny's different 1v1 events um, yeah. always go very well. So. I'm all yeah, for... as long as we don't have lands for 1v1, let's incorporate it into that's right. Worlds, right? That's right. Throw it at Worlds. That's right. Yeah. And I, I love who, show matches as who well. Who doesn't love the international matchups that we never get? We never get Daniel versus Rawas, right? Because they're the pink. We never get Diaz versus Rawas. Let's, let's get those at Worlds. Yes. Yeah. I love show matches. I know the way RLCS and, and Rocket League games with best of sevens are structured. It's difficult to fit... A show match into a championship yeah. Sunday because if you have like just a best of three Counter Strike finals to play on that Sunday, right? That's gonna take like two hours or so. Right. Um, then you have time for a show match as well with just wacky rules or weird yeah. teams, or you can bring back a lineup of retired players. Yes, yes, things like that is yeah. lovely to watch. Like Everyone coaches engaged. or something. Yeah, just get get yeah, get the coaches to, to play each other to, to decide who's the better coach. Just just one for one. <laughs> we'll flip the roles. Flip the roles. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then of course the players need to coach. That's right. Yeah. I mean that's that's a given. <laughs> Things like that is so entertaining, yeah. and Agreed. the land environment really leans itself for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, th hit me. All right. So Julian, thank you for that one. Um. All right, we'll just throw you this one from Mop. He says, anything less than a top four at London would be a disappointment for Team Falcons. Um, oof, yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's right. Yeah. Because they have shown they can do it internationally, right? Mm -hmm. If you just saw the region, if you just have Mina going up against the other region, making that play of brackets is, is nothing to be ashamed of. But... Because Falcons specifically yeah. have such prowess on land and are so good at beating other regions with their style, yeah. top four is what they should aim for and nothing less. Right. That's I think I, take. I, I think I'm with you. I mean, especially with how strong they showed they were in that quarterfinal match with Carmine Corp. You know, a lot of people even still are rating them in that top four area. So I, I, I'm with you. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Talking about coaches, mm. here's a take from Pyro. Okay. Chrome has not helped Gen G's ceiling and has made them more inconsistent since he's signed on to coach. See the problem? Um, I mean, you, yeah, you could say that. That's fine. I think it, it, we're looking at a very, very small sample size. You know, the immediate result. It, it to me is not. I, I mean, first we don't really know how much a, a, a coach will change things, um, mm -hmm. so I don't know because we don't know exactly what the coaches do. Yeah, 
and but it's so individual I'm also, as well. I'm not too surprised by introducing something new to a team environment and then getting a little bit of a different result. You know, I mean, they, I mean, the first thing they did was win. They won the event. So, you know, the immediate reaction is like, well, Chrome's the greatest. And then <laughs> they fall out top eight. And so now we say, well, Chrome's the worst, right? So, I mean, yeah, we could say that. Yeah, they've been a little bit more inconsistent, but I'm not too surprised by that. You introduce something new to the team. We just talked about it with Diaz and Complexity. We talked about it with Dig and Stizzy, and then they bench Evo. I mean, when you introduce something new to it, it's going to break up that rhythm, break up that routine, change up the dynamic a little bit socially. And, they got, you know, they got to get used to it. So I'm not too worried about Gen G. I think their floor is, is plenty high. You know, I do think that that was a tough loss to OG in the top eight. But look, you're not going to be perfect throughout the season. You're going to have some tough, tough losses here and there. We've seen Carmine Corp miss the main event. So I'm not too worried about it. All right. From Langley, Arsenal and Rettles will team again before they retire. I don't see it happening. It would be <laughs> it would be the caster's dream when it's oh my goodness, yeah. The analysts, you know, it's just it's a good storyline, but that's about it. I, they have had a tough time when they were teaming, especially at the end of that world championship. There were there was so much drama going on. It's also not really two players who I see fit on a team at the moment. Right. They're, they might not just be cut out for that. Also, they're two players who, yes, came up together and have a lot of history, but now that they are the veterans and not the rookies anymore, they both are willing to take new talent under their wings mm -hmm. and give them the, uh, their experience and try to reach the top with younger newer right. talent with a lot of potential and i don't think they see that in each other so nah that's uh, not happening in my book maybe uh maybe a content run once they fully wind down but yeah but that's uh, different but that's, who different. Knows? that's who right knows? let's bring back the peeps well okay so from vesper kc's right. elimination in open qualifiers is the most shocking result of the open era. It's testing your your history knowledge. It is. Yeah. It's, it's hard to quantify too. this, but I'm going to mm. say no. Although it is a huge swing and a miss. The thing that stands out the most to me yeah. is BDS losing to Vitality in RLCS X. Oh. The, and I know that Vitality was good as well. Yeah. But BDS was just so incredibly dominant. They were so, um, you know, accepted by the community at large, casters, you know, very knowledgeable people, very casual fans, players alike. I mean, everyone, it was just BDS season. It was, yeah. it was theirs to, to, to win, to take, to celebrate. They dominated that region. I mean, I remember the debates. Everybody was saying that Europe is totally washed because of how dominant that te one team was. Yeah. Um, and so I think that for, for me... And like I said, I know that Vitaly was still a good squad, but I think that was just absolutely befuddling. I, like I could that. not yeah. believe it. Yeah. That was just not happening. And then it did. Oh. Yeah. Um, now this, this is obviously like that. That's different in the sense that that's a championship. Both of those teams probably should have been there. Um, and then obviously that is an upset. And this is, I mean, this is rough from Casey. This is a this is a tough loss here, but yeah. Anyways, that was a shocker for me. So that's think, gonna be my yeah. choice. I think it's more just how the format is structured right now. Sure. That it makes it bigger. Yes. With Casey. Right. But the like actual that, that, the actual loss to Top Cougars and to So isn't they go, the most they start, insane thing ever. If they start a Swiss stage 0 and two to those two, and then they win their next yeah. three and they're in the main event, we forget yeah. about it next week. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. whenever think about it again. So, yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Let me throw you this one from Igorus. G two are the most consistently elite team in the world. Oh, I think we would have loved to throw that one to Michael. <laughs> oh, that would have been good content. Uh, um, the most, uh, no, because ooh. you have Falcons. 
Oh, okay. They, they are an elite team. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone can can say they're not. And they are very, very consistent. Because yes, the competition within Middle East is not at the same level as we see in North America. No way. But you still have to win your matches. Yeah. You still have to do it every week. And that's what Team Falcons do. So right now it's Team Falcons. Now, I don't want to go so far as to say I'm going to rebuttal, but I do want to throw this out there. G2 has not finished lower than second in RLCS event all season. I mean, there there's a reason why this is a take. <laughs> they, they have absolutely a reason to be in that discussion. I'm just going to be a contrarian <laughs> and throw out a region a little bit closer to him. I hear you. Okay. We'll see what the comments say about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a hater. Tweet at me. It's, it's uh, right there. Tweet at him. Let him know. Garbage take. I might even reply. Who knows? Ooh. All right. So is that all? Of, that's all of our, that's all of our takes. Thank you for watching this segment of ShiftCast. If you do want to catch the full episode, you can catch it in the live tab of our YouTube channel or full episode is on Spotify as well. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time.